we're back in the garage, converted garage. Uh, so we got this electric heat heater, it's not working. Filter is dirty, so let's check it out. So here we go. I think it's been going off on high limit. We do have some melted wires here, so we're gonna fix those. All right, so we got all our new wires put in place. Everything's super tight. I'm gonna just make sure all this other stuff is tight. Uh, Cause usually you got loose stuff, that's when you get melted wires. And uh, these are three eighths, so you can use that to tighten them up if you have a 11 in one. Okay, so I'm checking my elements, make sure that they're all closed up and we don't have any open circuits here. Good. And by doing this, we're bypassing the high limits. So you can see that there's one missing. That's because I already checked them. And we have one that's closed. All right, so our elements are good. We're gonna check our high limits here. Sounds good. It's good. It's good. So that's the one I pulled out. See, it's open. I think it's bad because it's been getting tripped multiple times because of the dirty filter. Sometimes you can smack it and that'll reset it, but probably don't want to replace it. Yeah, so I've been trying to reset it. I think the contacts are burnt up. So let me see if I have another one. All right, so we got this universal high limit switch. It's adjustable from 135 to 175. We need 160, I believe, yep. And it resets at 20 degrees. So, John Stone to the rescue. All right, so we'll go ahead and set this to 160. 160 right there. All right, cool. Okay, so we got our new high limit in. I actually found some more melted wires, so I replaced those. We're gonna go ahead and cycle it, make sure everything's working. Um, so hopefully there's no other issues. So after checking, um, only these two circuits were running. And I just found out there's no call for heat, so this is stuck closed. So we need to see what's going on with that. Um, I'm gonna change these out, and then we'll try cycling things. Closer inspection, this thing's melted. So, yeah, this thing needs to get replaced. All right, so let's look at the circuit real quick. So we have W1, which is this wire. That's energizing this coil. When this is energized, then this one will energize as well because it's got the connectors. The way, the reason why low voltage is going through here is to ensure that heating two does not energize unless heating one is called for. So heating one will energize these two. When this closes, the common is open here. If we call for W2, 24 volts comes through here, which energizes this. As long as this is closed, it'll complete the circuit and this last one will turn on. And we have two circuits on this one. So that's how that works. Before, when I was turning on the power, the blower would come on right away and so it would want uh, two of the strips. But now I have power on, I have nothing turning on. So we'll verify that, which we don't want to turn on. Not yet anyways. Cool. 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 All right, let's we can call for fan first, see what happens. Okay, so we got fan, our fan relay right now, which is good. All right, we're gonna call for W1. Okay, so first one is on, second one is on, third one is on. This one is, these two are off because we're not calling for W2. We're gonna go ahead and energize W2. Okay, so we're energizing W2. First circuit is on. Second circuit is on, so we are good to go. We're back in business. Now we want to make sure that everything shuts off, so I've de-energized W1. So we want to make sure these actually shut off. So the reason why this is still going is it's de-energized, but it takes a while for it to cool down so it'll actually pop back open. So this is why it's important to make sure it actually shuts off. Okay, so this one turned off finally. That one turned off finally. That one is now off. That one is still going. 
right, so we got it all put back together. Just double checking everything off. Yep. 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 Everything's off. Cool. So yeah, we got her all zip tied so we can go ahead and close her up and get out of here. So I went ahead and drew out this schematic here just to help you understand how electric heater works. Most of them are pretty much set up like this. There might be some slight variances. Um, this is a pictorial. So the blue wires or the blue lines are gonna be low voltage. Red lines are high voltage. Black stuff is, you know, components. Um, I'm, you know, if you're an electrical engineer right now, you're probably cringing because this is probably like not exact the way it's supposed to be. Um, like I said, I'm not an electrical engineer, but this is just to help you kind of understand what's going on. I know it looks a lot. Don't worry. We're going to kind of go over it. So anyway, we have one relay here. This is a double stack uh, sequencer here. We have a fan relay with a normally open contact and normally closed contact. And then we have another sequencer to stack right here and another sequencer down here. These are electric strips, blower motor, and these are our high limit switches because they're temperature switches, okay? So, um, and then if you see these little U things, that just means it's going over, it's not connected. It's going over it because, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so if we're calling for heat, we're gonna energize 24 volts to W1, right? So we're gonna have W1 having 24 volts, which is gonna travel into our heating element or our coil in this case. Um, and it's gonna warm that thing up. So as it warms up, it's gonna go ahead and start closing these contacts at different points, at different timings, right? So this first one is gonna close, right? So we have our line one, which travels up here and goes into this first contact. When this closes, uh, the high voltage will move through it and continue on through our high limit and then into our electric strip, which will energize and start heating. And then, you know, go into L2. And then. Our second contact will close, same, same thing. It'll continue through and go through there, all right? Now, I see that uh, once this first contact closes, um, not only is the, the first heating element gonna be energized, but we also have another high voltage line that reads down to our fan relay, and that's gonna go into our normally closed contact. So high voltage will go through that contact and then go to our fan motor, which will energize the fan motor and that first strip at the same time, okay? And then that one's gonna close, second strip turns on, okay? Uh, now, 24 volts, it's also bounced off, comes out here, so from our W1, it's energizing this one, but then it's also bouncing off, coming down, and hitting our second heat relay, H2, energizes this coil. Now, this relay was set up a little different, so, this is a two-stage heater, so if you notice, the first set of contacts is blue, the second is high voltage, which is red. Um, so what's going on here is they're using this as a safety device, basically. So if you wanted to call for heating two or W2, um, you could only, it'll only do something if you're calling for W1. So if you have no, if you have not energized W1, these contacts will stay open, right? If you call for W2, it's gonna stop right there. It won't continue, it will not energize this relay, which is our second stage heat, or our H3 relay, or sequencer relay, right? So, what ends up happening is we call for W1, that will energize this, this will close, all right, at different timings, this will close, that heat strip will turn on. Now if we call for W2, we put 24 volts, and it'll travel, if this is energized, it'll go through it, and continue down, energize, this sequencer down here, which will close these two relays and energize these heating elements over here, okay? Now, if we're in a situation where we just wanna run just a fan, how does that work? Okay, well, super easy, okay? So obviously we de-energize all this stuff, so I'm just gonna erase these. So, whoops. Okay, now if you look at our um, fan relay here, you can see we have a normally closed contact and a normally open contact. So high voltage or line voltage is supplied by H1 on the load side. So if that's energized, we get high voltage, which would travel through the normally closed contact and energize our fan. But if we want to run just our fan, so we energize G, well, how does that gonna work? Well, if W1's not energized, we have no high voltage going to the, to the fan motor, so it won't turn on. So what we do is we connect our G directly to the fan relay coil 
and that will energize this. And remember, this is going to be a double pull. I guess technically it's double pull, single pull, or no, double pull, single throw, I believe. Uh, so basically that normally closed contact will open and that normally open contact will close. So now that this is energized, we have our line voltage on a separate one going into that normally open switch, which is now closed and will continue to the fan motor and energize that. So that's how that works. This is pretty much your normal setup. And then keep in mind, every single element will have a high limit uh, or a temperature switch. So if it gets too hot, it will open on rise. Um, so I think in this case, these were 160 degrees on rise. So um, basically if they reach 160 degrees, they pop open. And then um, when they get 20 degrees colder than 160, so that'd be 140. When the temperature drops down to 140, they reset and close again. So this is a basic, basic setup of how an electric only heater works. Um, hopefully this helps you out. I hope it's not too confusing. Like I said, I am no means an electrical engineer, so I'm sure this isn't done exactly the way it's supposed to, but hopefully this helps you understand what's going on with these circuits. Um, like I said, I did this all from memory. So um, in the comments, let me know if you have any questions, if I did this completely wrong, if you have suggestions on how I could do it better. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, they're very basic. There's not too much going on to them. So hopefully this helps you out if you come across of it. Uh, so thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools I use, make sure you visit my Amazon store and pick up a set for yourself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.